Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 14th of November. PM Narendra Modi woos business leaders from BRICS nations to invest in India. NT government protesters and Islamabad sit in to block roads countrywide. And campaigning wraps up ahead of presidential election in Sri Lanka. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi called upon business leaders from the BRICS nations to invest in India while addressing the closing ceremony of the BRICS Business Forum in Brazil. Modi also held bilateral meetings with presidents of China, Russia and Brazil aimed at bolstering ties. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday called upon business leaders from the BRICS nations to invest in India, particularly in infrastructure development. Addressing the closing ceremony of the BRICS Business Forum in Brazil's capital Brasilia, Prime Minister Modi said India is the world's most open and investment-friendly economy due to political stability, predictable policy and business-friendly reforms. Prime Minister Modi called upon BRICS business leaders to exploit the opportunities among member countries. हमारे बीच व्यापार की लागत को और कम करने के लिए आपके सुझाव बहुत उपयोगी होंगे। मैं यह भी अनुरोध करना चाहूँगा कि अगले दस वर्षों के लिए हमारे बीच बिजनेस में प्राथमिकता के क्षेत्रों की पहचान की जाए और उनके आधार पर इंट्रा ब्रिक सहयोग का ब्लूप्रिंट बनाया जाए। Prime Minister Modi earlier met Chinese President Xi Jinping for the second time in two months on the margins of the 11th BRICS summit. The leaders had discussions on various aspects of the multifaceted India-China relationship. Modi also held discussions with Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro, giving further boost to the strategic partnership between the countries based on common global vision and shared values. He also held a meeting with the Russian President Vladimir Putin. Both the leaders touched upon various facets of the strong and expanding India-Russia partnership. Schools in Indian capital New Delhi and adjoining areas have been advised to remain shut for two days due to the spike in pollution levels. The air quality plummeted to the hazardous category in the smog hit city on Thursday. The government in Indian capital New Delhi directed schools to remain shut for two days as air quality plummeted to hazardous category in the smog hit city on Thursday. Schools in Indian capital New Delhi and adjoining areas were advised to remain shut for the next two days due to the spike in pollution levels on Thursday. The Supreme Court mandated Environment Pollution Prevention and Control Authority or EPCA also asked industries not running on clean fuels to remain closed till Friday. The air quality index of the US Embassy in New Delhi stood at hazardous levels of 458 early Thursday morning. Students complained that closure of schools due to pollution was affecting their studies and making it difficult for them to step outdoors. सांस लेने में बहुत दिक्कत होती है कहीं आते जाते फिर ज्यादा अजीब सा लगता है कि मतलब खुल के सांस नहीं ले पाते हम और प्रॉब्लम तो बहुत बढ़ रही है स्कूल बंद हो चुके हमारी पढ़ाई में इफेक्ट हो रहा है बहुत कहीं आना जाना नहीं हो पा रहा इस वजह से बहुत प्रॉब्लम हो रही है to keep air pollution in check, Delhi government has restricted use of private cars until November 15th with an odd-even system allowing cars to use roads on alternative days depending on whether their license plate ends in an odd or even number. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has said he may extend the odd-even scheme. Meanwhile, 
The central government has told the court that it is exploring technology, including those from Japan, to tackle air pollution. In news from Pakistan, thousands of anti-government protesters called off a nearly two-week-long sit-in protest in Islamabad on Wednesday, but began what they called a Plan B aimed at blocking the country's roads to demand Prime Minister Imran Khan's resignation. Anti-government protesters in Pakistan called off a two-week sit-in on the capital Islamabad's main highway on Wednesday but began what they called a Plan B, aimed at crippling the country's roads and ousting Prime Minister Imran Khan. The protesters, led by Fazl ur Rahman, head of the conservative Jamiat Ulema Islam Fazl or JUIF party, had been holding the sit-in since October 31st, demanding Imran Khan's resignation and a fresh election over allegations of electoral fraud and mismanagement of the economy, accusations the government denies. On Wednesday, Rehman told supporters to return to their home states to begin Plan B. The protests come as the government is battling high inflation and a sluggish economy. The opposition says Khan's government is illegitimate and is being propped up by the military, which has ruled Pakistan for about half of its history and set security and foreign policy. Moving on, Baloch activists across the world on Wednesday observed on November 13th, the Baloch Martyrs Day, by holding peaceful protests and gatherings. They highlighted the issue of genocide of Baloch people by Pakistan and urged the international community to intervene. Members of the Baloch National Movement UK chapter gathered in London on Wednesday and appealed India to be instrumental in Balochistan's freedom and highlight the atrocities against the Baloch community by the Pakistani military at international forums. The gathering in London was held to observe November 13, the Baloch Martyrs Day. Activists highlighted abductions and killings of thousands of political activists, intellectuals and journalists in Balochistan and called on the international community to intervene. India can play a big role uh, so in supporting our movement. India can raise human rights violations in Pakistan. Uh, uh, you know, India played a great role in uh, Bangladesh in 1971 and that's a historic uh, decision uh, by the then Indian Prime Minister. Pakistan is not a nation. It is on the country, it is a place where the historical nations are subjugated, punished and uh, penalized and robbed like Sindhis, like Balos, like Pashtuns. Baloch activists across the world also launched hashtag 13 November Baloch Martyrs Day on Twitter on Wednesday to attract the world's attention to the issue of genocide of Baloch people. Baloch activists living in UK, Germany, South Korea and many other parts of the world also organized peaceful protests to mark the day and pay tributes to those killed in their fight for Baloch freedom over the years. In news from Afghanistan, Firoz Bashri, the head of the Government Media and Information Center in Afghanistan, has said Anas Akkani and other released Taliban leaders will not return to the battlefield as assured by the international partners. Bashri said all the three prisoners will go to Qatar and remain there only. Head of the Government Media and Information Center in Afghanistan, Firoz Bashri, has said that international partners have assured that the released Taliban leaders will not return to the battlefield and will go to Qatar and remain there. Bashri on Wednesday said that the Afghan government expects the release of the three Taliban members will reduce violence in the country and will make the Taliban open to direct talks with it. 
The remarks came a day after President Ashraf Ghani announced the planned release of the three high-profile prisoners in exchange for kidnapped American and Australian professors in a move to start peace talks with the Taliban. All three prisoners, including Mali Khan, Hafiz Rashid and Anas Haqqani, are members of the Deadly Haqqani Network, a hardline faction of the Taliban. They were held in a government detention center at Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan. Bangladeshi President Mohammad Abdul Hamid, who is on a four-day goodwill visit to Nepal, met top Nepali leadership including President Bhandari and Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli on Wednesday. The leaders discussed issues of mutual interest and concerns between the two countries. President of Bangladesh, Mohammad Abdul Hamid, who is in Nepal for a goodwill visit, met top Nepali political leaders in capital Kathmandu on Wednesday. Nepalese Vice President Nanda Bahadur Poon and Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli held courtesy meetings with Hamid, in which the leaders discussed matters of mutual interest and concerns between the two countries. The leaders in separate meetings also held serious deliberations about transforming the existing close and traditional relations between the two nations into economic collaboration, local media reported. The Bangladeshi president arrived in Kathmandu on Tuesday at the invitation of his Nepalese counterpart Bidya Devi Bhandari. Upon his arrival at the Tribhuvan International Airport, he was accorded a ceremonial welcome. His visit to the Himalayan nation will conclude on November 15. The intense election campaigning ahead of the November 16th presidential poll in Sri Lanka has ended. A total of 35 candidates are in the fray, but the race is essentially between the frontrunners Gotabe Rajapaksa and Sajita Prevadasa. An intense six weeks campaigning for the upcoming presidential election in Sri Lanka ended on Wednesday evening. Though there is no official opinion polls in the country, political analysts said the momentum has tilted towards one of the frontrunners, Sajid Premadasa, which was with his rival wartime defence chief, Gotabaya Rajapaksa, earlier. <laughs> Gotabaya, who is backed by majorities in Hala Buddhists in the country, led the operations against Tamil Tigers when his elder brother, Mahinda Rajapaksa, was president. He has faced lawsuits over allegations of staged killings of Tamil separatists, critics and journalists during the war. May I, at the Siyaluma Karunu, Prikriyat Makakaran at Pulwa, and Isa Mamatamun Ansel at Porunduena, Mage Dura Kale Tuladi, may Abe Pratipati Prakashani, Tina Sam Karunakma, Sampurna Karana, Ikeneka, Mamatahuru Karana, Wagema Api Visheshen, Merate Jati Karaksha Venuin, Pramukatta Labadi Latibino. A total of 35 candidates are running for the presidential election, but the race is essentially between Gotabaya and Premadasa. The main issues which have taken the central stage in the election are Islamist militancy and the tensions between the dominant Sinhalis Buddhists and minority ethnic Tamils in the island nation. The polls are scheduled for November 16. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. PM Modi boosts business leaders from BRICS nations to invest in India. ND government protesters and Islamabad sit in to block roads countrywide. And campaigning wraps up ahead of presidential election in Sri Lanka.
Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.